Hello, and welcome back to another segment of the exercise portion of the Healthy Lifestyle Center. My name is Akeisha Johnson, and the topic today will be about racial disparities in exercise as it pertains to health status and how different ethnic groups see different health discrepancies and issues. As I just mentioned, different racial and ethnic disparities are well established throughout the lifespan depending on the health status and race of the individual. So different people of color generally fare worse than white people on most measures of physical health. This is due to a couple of reasons that we'll discuss later in the presentation and video. But as I mentioned, we have to start beginning to open up our scope and perspective as to why we see the different variables and variants in risk and relative risk of different diseases and longevity depending on your race. These disparities are often particularly concerning, especially for older individuals, because even in white people that we see most of our research, we see that the relative risk begins to just increase substantially just because of age being one of those factors. And so growing evidence indicates that the earlier health enhancing behaviors are adopted, the greater the likelihood that the chronic illnesses that differentially affect older racial ethnic minorities can be reduced or prevented. And so this is important because we see and we often think that engaging in health doesn't begin until we're in their 20s, 30s, or 40s. And so while any intervention is good, beginning in the, starting in the beginning is often and fares better for the individual when it's taught in school. And so this is how we see that teaching people when they're young, when they're children, in those most developmental and formative years for your body and for yourself mentally and cognitively is the most important um, behavior change that you'll see over the lifetime. And so when we hear this topic, we often have to wonder why we see those things. There have been myths over time that have suggested that there is a genetic difference between um, different racial groups and that's why we see that there is a system of racism that that perpetuates the idea that one group is inferior to the other. However, we can see that there are a lot of different factors um, that surround these different um, ethnic groups that causes them to have a far, wor far worse health status than white people typically do. We see that there's underfunded education systems around some of these racial groups. And so when I mean racial groups, I mean other groups that are non-white. So we see Hispanic and Latinos that are not white, African-Americans, um, any other black people that don't originate, that are African-American origin, but are of the diaspora, um, people that are from Africa. We see people that are um, Indian, Native Indian, American Indian, um, we have people that are Pacific Islanders, all of these different racial groups, Asian and the many groups that are within that in, in that category. We see that there's a lack of access to resources around these populations. Um, language proficiency allows for the different nav navigation and communication of your health when you just simply go to the doctor or you even have access. Um, that even goes in terms of communicating for um, health insurance. We see that many of these racial groups in comparison to white people don't have as much health insurance. They're surrounded by food deserts and so they don't have access to adequate and affordable fresh foods. And so we see that chips and fast foods are the, really the only cheapest things around them. And so we would ask why do they continue to eat those foods when in reality it's that those are the only foods that they can afford. That, include, that leads into their dietary pattern, and then just overall access to equipment, access to an environment that provides and is promoting health, um, access to a gym where they have equipment, um, being taught how to actually properly work out. These are all factors that we need to consider. And so overall, we see that there is a systemic and institutionalized racist system that has kept racial and ethnic groups out of being educated properly, out of being supplied the supplies and resources that they need, and so they often fall through the cracks of the healthcare system that we have here in this country. And so overall, we'll look at the impact of ethnicity on exercise. 
Researching guidelines tend to not be representative of the diversity of ethnic groups. Most research, even in the recent years, have been placed solely on white people. And while that has, g- and while that has given us a wide variety of information to use as a starting point that isn't where we are to finish because we do see that there are some variances even between groups and how groups might respond depending on their environment. There's several impeding factors that aren't clear as to whether um, these differences are caused physiologically, culturally, environmentally, or even a combination of both. And as we can see that having a combination of all of these different sectors and of issues you see that there is a larger impact on health status instead of just pinpointing one of those categories. So overall, understanding ethnic differences in physical activity will enable ethnically appropriate physical activity interventions to increase physical activity. Because if we look at just the relative risk for someone um, using research that has only been conducted on one group, you can see that for racial and ethnic groups, that are that fare worse than that we can see that the relative risk may be wor- may be bad and then it increases that gap in between being healthy and unhealthy depending on what group you belong to and so for more information about this topic and just overall information about how to increase your health how to take care of um, getting access to equipment getting access to healthcare, you can visit us Um, on our website, visit us at our Ball State location or our new location in Meridian, or contact us us, by phone or by email. Thank you and see you next time.